Let's get a view now from Dennis Kucinich, who's a U.S. Democratic congressman in the state of Ohio, one of the most hotly contested states in the U.S. Uh, presidential election. Uh, Dennis, thanks for being with us. I just wanted to check, was yours one of the seats that was, uh, was up for uh, re-election yesterday? Uh, no, my, my seat was redistricted. My district had been uh, cut up into four different pieces uh, at the beginning of the year, and so I had a primary election that I didn't make it, uh, but I'm still intending to be a, a strong voice on Capitol Hill on the issues that I've been speaking about for so many years. Excellent. Dennis, I, I want to ask you about um, Republicans I in the House now. What do you think uh, the president will be, be up against and, uh, and the Democrats in, in the House. Do you think we're likely to see the Republicans continuing with their uh, aggressive, uncompromising uh, position uh, in Congress? Are we now looking at another four years of partisanship and, and frustration for the president? I, I think, first of all, uh, the thing to watch for is there have been signals out of the White House early on that they may be ready to make some concessions on issues like Social Security. Uh, I, you know, I don't like it, but it, that could meet some agreement with Republicans, because just, be, just if, you, you know, if you have agreement doesn't necessarily mean that you're going in the right direction. Uh, on the tax issues, watch for what happens with the alternative minimum tax because there are millions of Americans who could be facing a, uh, an automatic tax increase uh, without having prepared to pay that, those taxes through their payroll deductions. Uh, I, I will tell you that uh, we're looking at a very contentious period. The fact of the matter is that if you're going to cut spending and you ignore military spending, which has gone up tremendously, that's a problem. If you're going to cut spending and you ignore America's expansiveness, uh, globally with high technology, that's a problem. Uh, so uh, I don't know how much is going to get done in the uh, remaining session in Congress, uh, but America is still looking at a stagnating economy. We have problems here at home we have to resolve, and we're becoming less able to impact events uh, uh, around the world. You, you, you sound pretty pessimistic. Uh, uh, are you? I mean, it, it, you said the White House seems to be prepared to, to well, compromise. I'm a, real, I'm a realist about... Okay. <laughs> I'm a realist about what we have. Uh, the election yesterday was essentially a status quo election. Even though $6 billion was spent totally in all campaigns for this election, you still have the Democrats in control of the Senate, the Democrats in control of the White House, and the Republicans in control of the House. Now, I, I have been part of this debate. I've seen what's happened. I'm telling you that the basic forces that are pushing against each other, Republicans trying to protect certain tax privileges for, for certain interest groups, uh, the, you know, some Democrats trying to do that, but also pushing for the middle class. This is, these are forces that are not easily going to yield. And uh, the, the whole question about will social programs be cut? There are Democrats who will never go along with that, but there are some who are ready. So we have to see where the give and take is going to be. And uh, my concern that, uh, that, that Democrats, in the interest of just getting an agreement, will start to capitulate on some of those things that are the most important to our political base. You say we'll have to wait and see. I suppose we're going to get a, a, a very quick indicator of how things are going to go over the next four years uh, in that the, the, the so-called fiscal cliff has to be dealt with pretty quickly. Yeah, what's past this prologue. You know, you've seen uh, stalemate. I, I think we'll continue to see that. However, keep in mind, as they approach the fiscal cliff, I think they're going to flatten it out through some legislative fix so it'll be more a fiscal gap than a cliff. People will find a way to clamber down and, and, uh, and, uh, and through that gap and, uh, and up over it to keep the country going. I don't see that America is going to uh, shut down by any means. There's a lot of political gamesmanship that goes on here. But every time we approach the moment of uh, it looks like uh, some kind of fiscal Armageddon, people, uh, wiser head prevails, uh, prevail and people back off. And that's going to happen again. They'll come up with some solution that'll take us into the next year. But sooner or later, we've got to come to a realization that we can't keep spending money on war, we can't keep having a $600 billion trade deficit, and we can't keep giving tax breaks to the uh, to the wealthiest Americans without finding a way to okay. prime the pump of our economy and create new jobs and wealth for everyone. Okay. Dennis Kucinich, many thanks indeed for being with us on Al Jazeera. Good to talk to you, sir. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.